Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online. Today's pretty exciting. We've been sent a box from the Army Painter, which is their new Quickshade washer set. Now, this comes with 11 different coloured washers designed to paint your models very quickly. I'm going to go through some of the washers on Space Marine models just to show you how they look over a white base coat. On the back of here, you've got the red, the blue, and the green, just to show you what it looks like when you put it over a silver colour. And these remind me very much of the um, glazers that you can use from time to time just to tint the colour. So these can be used to not only shade and put um, darkness back into your models but also to tint the colour to whichever you're trying to, whatever look you're trying to achieve. I'm going to open it, we're going to see what you actually get inside the box. So this is the first time I've looked in this. Okay, so we've got a army painting guide. And inside here we've got an introduction into painting, assembling your models, spraying your models, because they obviously do a, a huge range of spray paints and I've used a few of their, their paints in the past, but you could do get things like the, the flesh tone here. If you've got an army which is majority, uh, the majority of the model is covered in flesh, like you've got Skaven or some sort of Beastman army where it's generally flesh, or even Catachan. For, for like Warhammer 40k, spraying them with this colour will just speed up your army painting to no end. And you, you pop your base colours on and then you can dip them, that's their quick shade pots. Uh, and that just gives it a nice slimy dark finish and done. So four simple steps and you've got a model painted to tabletop standard and after that you can add some more layers and highlights to that. These washers can be used instead of the dipping. So um, so it's definitely something I'm more familiar with rather than dipping my models I, I paint all of my shades on with a wash and uh, if you were to use this dipping technique and you've missed a tiny bit or some of this dip hasn't gone into the recesses you've got the colour matched washers in this set and you can just pick out some of the areas that haven't haven't been covered um, so this is a, a very nice guide assembling your miniatures there's a lot of text and a lot of detail in here. It's not like a little tiny piece of paper just included. There's a lot inside here. We've got a range as well. I'm not sure this is something you get with Army Paint every time you buy a product from. Like normally I just buy individual paints or brushes. This is the first box set which I've received. And it was very nice of Army Painter to send this to us to look in. So thank you again for that one. Um, so the range of colour primers, there is a, there is a wide range. Uh, and you know when I'm looking at painting an army I generally look to see if there is a spray paint available if you haven't got access to a, an airbrush having a, a spray can speeds up the process really um, dramatically for my um, Imperial Fist Heresy army I used this demonic yellow at the time there was an Avalon Sunset available from Games Workshop which is a much darker yellow than this and all I did was spray the model with demonic yellow and then used AK Interactive uh, weathering products just to cover the models and make them all grungy and battered and and horrible and it was super fast you could do 10 imperial fists in an hour and a half to two hours and that's just base coats and then weathering um, it's so so fast explaining you how to use the spray paint we all know people who have had issues i've had issues in the past with um, clumping spray paints and, and things going all nasty and dusty explaining you how to use the spray paints, how to use the primers we've got another little pamphlet in here that's a range of products Army Painter have got tools, green stuff, all of your basing materials as well again more colour primers, quick shades and their entire paint range as well and they also do some incredible brushes. There's one which is pretty much one, one bristle. There we go, the Psycho brush. And they do acrylic paints. They've got metallics, quick shades, and effects. They've got a whole range. And then we've got examples of what the quick shade tones look like after 24 hours of being left. There's a huge amount of information in here. really good yeah and just saying don't play with uh, unpainted models which I wholeheartedly agree with and then we've got good old Rick Priestley on the back of there that's nice so move that one out of the way that's the painting guide 
Now what do we actually get inside this box? Nice plastic container. I'm just going to get these out. All right, let's have a look at what colours we've got inside here, which washers are, are available in this box set. We've got a purple tone, a red, which is quite a dark red. It's not like the um, crimson colour from Games Workshop. There's one green shade here, and we've got a military shader as well, which is a little bit of a brighter green. So there's two types of green inside there, a blue. Then we've got three, which um, I did, you know primarily I'd be looking at using these as flesh colours, all three of these. But you could use them for browns, um, any sort of leathery materials. But we've got a flesh wash, light tone, and mid brown. And then we've got the three which match with their dipping solutions. We have the soft tone, the strong tone, and the dark tone. What I'm going to do is I have 11 Space Marines and these have all been primed with a, I've sprayed them black from underneath and then I just covered them in white as well. So there's a little bit of shadow you can see there, it's a bit darker on the underside. It's already got a little bit of shading on there and the rest of it is painted with their white, Corex white primer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Army Painter blue and I'm going to get the Games Workshop Draken Half Nightshade and I'm going to paint these mod this model in halves so you can see what the Army Painter and the Games Workshop looks like side by side and we can have a bit of an experiment at the uh, comparison between the two. I'm not going to do that with all of the Games Workshops, I'm only going to pick out a couple of the colours just to see the difference, I want to know the difference myself. And then I'm going to paint a Space Marine entirely, so the ones that I don't use Games Workshop on um, like this flesh wash for example, I'll paint the entire Space Marine in this flesh wash colour and we'll see what they look like when they've dried. Okay, first of all, I'm going to get a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade. So this is the Games Workshop paint. And I'm not going to mix this down, I'm not going to thin it at all. We're going to have a look what it paints at, um, like straight out of the pot. And I'm only going to do this roughly, I just want to get two halves of the model. Okay, that's the Drakenhof Nightshade. Now we're going to have a look at the Blue Tone from Army Painter. Okay, already more vibrancy. This is cross between a wash and the glaze that I'm used to using. Um, there's definitely more colour in this blue. And it's going on really nicely. I've always used Games Workshop washers in the past. Um, and that's just because that's what I've been used to. But if I was looking to do something with a little bit more colour in the past I'd have had to make my own glaze up or use the, the Gilliman Blue for example from Games Workshop I'd be using that and thinning it down to the right consistency. Now if I'm looking to do a wash over a model and get this sort of vibrancy from the blue I can just use the Army Paint to wash instead. And like a lot of products there's it, options more than anything. There's nothing saying one is better than the other, they just have different uses. But it'll be interesting to see what this dries like, see what the end result is. There's a definite shift in colour from this almost blacky blue shade that the Drakenhof Nightshade has to the vibrant blue that this blue tone has got from Army Painter. and. It's almost as if there's some medium mixed into it. 
you can see that this one's left a lot of the white previously showing it is more of a tint whereas this one is more of a, a shade so if you wanted to do the darker shadows this is the one I'd go with if I'm looking to tint something I'd go with the blue tone Okay, we're starting with the um, Carabao Crimson from Games Workshop again. And we're going to pop this down the right hand side of this Space Marine. The other thing I'm going to test as well is what happens when you mix in some water with these washers. So I'm going to get a bit of water, mix it into the red from Games Workshop. And I'm just going to apply it to the back of his backpack. And now let's have a look at red tone from the Army Painter. One thing I'm always going to prefer as well is these dropper bottles. It's so much easier to get your paint out. You just you know, take off the lid, put on as much as you want, and that's it. No messing around. Wow, okay, this is very, very, very similar. I was expecting it to be a different colour. When you're looking at price on these as well, they're pretty decent. This is 11 washers in this box set and it's $29.99 recommended retail price. Obviously you will find retailers that sell this with a discount but $29.99 for 11 washers is not a bad price. Again one thing I've noticed is it doesn't... you can let's move some of that. You know, actually with the Army Painter, you can still move it around when you place it. I know this Games Workshop one's been put on earlier, but in, you know, if you place a Games Workshop wash onto a model, you don't really have much maneuverability. If you place it and you wanted to move it, it will stain the previous colour. These Army Painters, you can still shift them around the model. You can almost place, like, cover the entire model in this wash and then move it around afterwards. You can see this has been on for a little bit and I'm still able to move it around the surface wherever I want it to go. So if you wanted to blend two colours together you can do that. Let's do soft tone. This is straight out of the part, no mixing. I'm putting quite a heavy coat on here. And these are the ones that colour match with the dip, dips that are available from Army Painter as well. These just go on really nicely. Absolutely no messing around. And now let's try putting some wash, uh, some water into the wash. And see how it looks on the other side. And this is over white again. If you were doing browns and all sorts of reds and different colours, this soft tone would look really nice over the top of it. So we'll pop that one to one side. Next, we're going to try green tone from Army Painter. Dark Angels. I mean, this is this is almost a Dark Angel colour, just looking at it straight away. You can probably pick one of their sprays. Um, I'd have to look through the book again and see what sprays were available for a primer, but pick a green, paint all the base colours on it, and then put this over the top of it, and you've got a very quick, easy Dark Angels armour.
Same as before, I'm just going to mix some water into this green. I'm just going to pop it down the left hand side of his body and see how it looks in the end. I'm certainly going to be using these to tint colours and to almost glaze rather than wash. And the more water you mix into this, the more of a glaze you get. See the difference between this here? This has had some water mixed into it. You can see how light this is compared to his right shoulder pad, which has come straight out of the pot. And same up here, his left shoulder pad, that's had a little bit of water mixed into it. The right shoulder pad straight out of the pot. So even with the same wash, you can get two very different looks depending on what you want. And obviously the more water you mix into this, the easier it flows onto the model. There we go, we'll see what that ends up looking like in the end. Now we've got the military shader, which is another shade of green. And we'll just we'll see what this shade is once we've put it onto the model. And compare it to the green tone which we've just done. So this stuff isn't easy to, to work with, like most washers, straight out of the pot, it's still a little bit thick. I would always recommend mixing in just a tiny bit of water just to make the flow a little bit better than it is. There we go, I'm going to mix a bit of water. Do the left side of his body with with the uh, the thinned wash goes on much easier. But obviously won't be as darker. I would still say doing two thin coats of washers is going to be easier and look nicer than one thick coat. The only downside to that is you've got to wait for it to dry before you do the second coat, but if you're doing a batch of 10 models, or even 5, or whatever it is you're working on, you just wait for the first lot to dry before you move on to the second one. Next up we've got the purple tone. This is a really colourful purple. There's a lot of, of um, vibrancy to this. And if you don't have the spray paints available, if you don't buy the, the purple spray that Army Painter do, you could even do this, what I've done with a, a white, and then wash it, and you could pick out some highlights afterwards. Even that will look better than grey gray plastic or bare metal on the tabletop. Just a little bit of colour, just to brighten it up. And we're not going for super high level paint jobs here. This is what Army Painter does best, and that's painting armies. Next, we'll mix a little bit of water into that purple. Okay, the next colours we're on to now are almost the flesh tones, or the ones that I've picked out as flesh tones. We have Flesh Wash. Because there's so many different varied skin colours, skin tones, you could use all sorts of different washers to tint skin in any sort of colour.
I'm going to mix a bit of water into this and just do the back part here. See how quickly it goes on when you mix a bit of water. Just imagine the speed of armies being painted if you do them all with this method. So we've got light tone. These skin tones is what I'm calling them. Very similar to the soft tone. Once these are fully dried, it'll be interesting to see what they look like. How they dry compared to how they go on, because they all go on very similarly. I find when I'm applying these washers, you do a very rough job covering it everywhere, let it pool, and then just start removing it before it dries. And there's definitely more work working time with these army painters. You can see I'm just letting it go everywhere. And then before it dries, you just make sure you've got everywhere. If you've got any places like on the top of here you don't want as much, you just remove it. On the top of there, just remove it. You can see I can let's dry it on here. You can almost remove the majority of that paint up and it's tinted it it's not stained it it's not left any marks let's try one more thing as well actually let's get some a q-tip and just try and remove it from the surface look at that it's not even leaving any staining so you've got the, the shading in between all of these gaps. Let's try it on the fur, on his head. Just very gently over the top there. Perfect. So things like flat surfaces like shoulder pads where you wouldn't necessarily want the wash here. Let's see what we can do. There we go. So we've still got in the recesses around the shoulder rim lot, the wash has gone into there and we've just removed it from the surface and it's not left any staining at all. If you were wanting to paint white space marines with a tinted colour in between them, this is definitely the fastest way to go. Spray them white, cover them in wash, and then remove it from any flat surfaces. Now the final, this is mid-brown, this is what I'm, I'm calling flesh tone washers. Let's see how this goes on, this is a different colour entirely. This one is like Reichland flesh shade. This is what I would compare it to. There we go. So that's the mid brown. Let that dry. Now we've got another one of the quick shade color matches. This is the strong tone. And there's only one darker one after this. And it is called dark tone. So let's see what the strong tone looks like. There we go. That's the strong tone done. You can see once you mix in some water into it, how much thinner it goes. And how you can just almost pin wash it into all of the areas and just remove it off any areas you don't want it using a, a cotton bud or a q-tip. Now I'm not sure what this is going to come out, if it's going to be a, a dark brown, if it's going to be more of a black. We'll have to see. And it's a black. Mr. Brownie Black. I love Norn Oil and Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. I think they're the two washers that I will put on pretty much every single model and most of the time I'll do a mix between medium, null and agrax in a lot of my 
my painted models, I will apply that wash to it because it, it dulls everything down, it blends all of the colours together and it just makes it look grungy and nasty. So I do like that combination. What I will have to try is mixing dark tone with strong tone and some medium and seeing how that comes out. I'm going to mix some water into this. And I find that Null Oil in particular from Games Workshop works brilliantly over silver. So it'll be interesting to see how this works over a silver as well. Okay, while we're doing this, I'm going to mix in one drop of blue tone, one drop of strong tone, and one drop of water. And I want to see... There you go, might need more water. I'm thinking World Eaters. I think it's going to be at two, let's try three drops of water. That's quite a thin coat. Might even need four. I'm thinking for a quick World Eater colour scheme. Could you do the same as I do with Games Workshop washers, and I think it's doable, if not better. Just because you can manoeuvre the wash around the surface. So one main thing with the World Eaters is you want it to be a white, while still having a blue tint, a dark blue tint to it. So let's try another bit of water in there. Because of the vibrancy of the blue tone, there we go, that's more like it. You can tint the white without overpowering it. There we go, so it's a white tinted with a bit of a blue. And then once that's fully dried, you just go around and edge highlight some of the panels, pick out the rest of the colors with base colors. Okay, so these are all fully dried now, or you know, majority of them are fully dried. I just want to show you what the washes look like afterwards. Now this is the mid-tone. I'm going to do them next to each other so you can have a look at um, what they end up like. Mid-tone, obviously on, on most of these it's going to be darker on the right hand side and lighter on the left hand side where I've mixed the water just to thin it down. But I'm um, pretty pleased with the, the final look of it. It's dried really nice. It's dried matte. It doesn't have any satin or gloss finish to it. And you can easily add your highlights and your, your, your layering on top of all of this just gives you a really nice starting point or a finishing point you know if you put these washers on last which I do from time to time if I'm after a, a quick paint job the washers will be the last thing that I'll do I'm just gonna flick through we've got that's mid brown next one was the light tone that's that one very similar these are the ones that I would use for, for skin tones there you go and then the third one in that skin tone selection is the uh, flesh wash one. Flesh wash one, that's one way of saying it. And again, a very similar browny, fleshy tone, but it is slightly different. You see it's still drying on the backpack, but when it dries it does, it does go fully matte, which is nice. Sometimes you get satin finishes on these if you don't mix them up properly. We'll move those flesh ones out of the way. Next we have purple tone. So the purple tone was really vibrant when we put that on. Um, it's, it's come out a little bit more matte than I thought it was going to do. It's still got lots of colour to it. If you wanted to tint something, this purple tone is brilliant for that. Next we've got the military shader. And this was one of the two greens. The second one was green tone, so I'm going to show you those two next to each other. Now green tone is definitely a stronger green out of the two. Even when I've thinned them down, you've still got a much stronger tone from that green side. Military shader, if you're going to be doing things like filters, if you were painting tanks and you wanted to blend some of the greens together, then I think military sh uh, shader would be better. But if you wanted to have some vibrancy to the green, green tone is definitely the better one to use out of the two. 
and I still think like this one for Dark Angels, perfect, absolutely brilliant. Next we've got the ones that we mixed with Games Workshop paints as well, so we've got the red, so the red tone from Army Painter is this uh, left hand side of the model and like I was saying it's a bit thinner than the Games Workshop straight out of the pot. These ones were straight out of the pot. Army Paint on one side and Games Workshop on the right side. This is Caraber Crimson. But overall, the two washes from Army Painter and Games Workshop are very similar to each other. I don't think there's very much difference. Um, this one is more of a, a pinky red, the Caraber Crimson, whereas the red tone from Army Painter has got a bit more red in it. Onto the blue tone now. So the blue tone is the left hand side of this model and the right hand side is Drakenhof Nightshade from Games Workshop. Out of the two, again they've got very different uses. This one is much thinner than Games Workshop. The Army Painter one just flows a lot nicer I'd say. Uh, if you want in the colour underneath it to show a little bit better, in this case it was the white, it definitely shows up. If you're wanting to completely transform it and darken the colour then Drakenhof Nightshade is the way to go. But again, very similar in the end result. Both of them dried matte. Um, but I do like how the Army Painter one settles on the model though, especially for flat surfaces. A lot of the time if you wash a Space Marine like this, it's got a lot of flat surfaces. Washers don't tend to do too well on the model. With the Army Painter example, you can see it's done what I need it to do. It's gone into all of the recesses, it's shaded everything, and it's not left all of the watermarks and washers on the top. And if it did, you use your Q-tip or your, your um, what's it called? Cotton bud, and you just remove wherever it pulls, and you've still got time to work with it. Whereas with the Games Workshop, I find that they stain very quickly. Now last we've got the tones, the, uh, well I say the, the tones, they're all tones. We have soft, strong and dark tones. Now these are the ones that you can use for the um, dipping solutions. Now we have soft, which is this one. We've got strong in the middle and you can see the only difference is that this one is a little bit darker in the recesses. This would work fine for things like flesh tones and browns. This again would work for browns and certain skin tones, but it's just basically a darker version of the soft one. And then the final one, pop these down, is dark tone. Now this is the equivalent of Norman Oil. It's still not fully dried, but um, it's, it's pretty much dry in the same way. I've also used it on the silver bolt gun, which I've done there. The silver didn't show up too well to be honest, I didn't let it dry before I put the uh, wash onto it. All in all though, I think out of the entire wash set, the dark tone does its job. I'm just not sure if it does anything different to Norn Oil, I think it's pretty much the same. So if you were to buy these for different uses, I think most of the colours, except for the dark tone and maybe a couple of the, uh, like the soft tone and the strong tone, I think these three are closest to the ones that Games Workshop already do. The rest of them, however, all have multiple uses, so they've got more vibrant colour or they flow a little bit better, so there's there's worth in having them as well as Games Workshops. Um, if you were to buy this as a set and you'd never painted before, then it gives you everything you need to start. So it's quite a good, um, a good set, a good box to go for, especially if you wanted to, to bulk up your washers that you've already got. Um, I'm just going to show you this last one. This was the experiment I did, mixing one part blue tone, one part dark tone, and then I ended up doing about four parts water. Um, and this was to try, to try and get a, a bluish wash over the entire white and see how it ended up. And I let it dry a little bit too much and then removed it too late, and you can see there, look, it's left the, the marks on the shoulder pad. So if you are going to be doing that technique where you use the cotton bud to remove the wash, you need to do it quickly. This has also had the, the black, the uh, strong tone over the top of, um, over the top of the silver. And it's come out quite nicely again. It's very similar to Norn Oil from Games Workshop. But overall it looks nice. 
So all in all, these are really great um, as a paint set. They're great as a wash set. I'm excited to try them on other models in future. This was just a test to see how they work over a white Space Marine, so a white Prime Space Marine. The products go along really well with Army Painters' current range. You've got their spray primers, you've got the rest of their paint range, as well as all of their basing products. You, you know, you can, it's a one-stop shop. If you go to Army Painter, you can pick up everything you need to get your models painted and on the tabletop in a very short time altogether. The products work really well in relation to other brands, the ones that I've tried at least. They're on par. I've not found any negatives so far with this paint set. Um, I have had some issues with a couple of spray primers in the past and that's because of issues I had spraying it in the wrong temperatures or not close enough to the model. And it's quite nice that uh, Army Painter included in this box set it includes this guide which I've already been through at the beginning. So it's nice that Army Painter include that and give you some tips on how to, to uh, basically set up your models for painting. Just want to say thank you to Army Painter for sending this box over to us to do a review on. It's been really good and it's been interesting for myself just to see the comparison between their products and the ranges that I currently use. If you enjoyed this video, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, we do appreciate you uh, subscribing to the channel and it keeps us doing all of these videos for you. If there's something in particular you want to see a certain range from a company, a um, technique used with a specific paint or paintbrush or anything, you know, if there's anything you actually want to see, let us know and we'll do our best to, to get these products and review them for you. But that's this uh, Army Painter wash set review. I'm going to put the links in the description below where you can go to pick this up. Obviously there's uh, local retailers and anywhere that's going to be able to stock it for you, but I'll put the website to Army Painter. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next review.